Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to classify numbers, which is a topic that sometimes shows up on the Mathematics Knowledge Subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB. This video, as it happens, is broken down into two parts. In the first part of this video, we're going to discuss uh, the definitions of these different types of numbers. And in the second part of this video, we're going to work on some practice problems that should closely mirror what you may see on the ASVAB. Uh, as always, I strongly encourage you to take notes as you watch this video. And what's more, I also want to encourage you to make an effort to work out the practice problems in this video on your own. That is to say, after I read a question, you should pause the video, try to answer it on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. All right, so more often than not, when people learn how to classify numbers, they look at a chart like this. And in addition to looking at this chart, we're going to be writing in our own examples. That way we can understand what this chart means. So the very first thing I want to point out is that all the numbers we're going to talk about today are types of real numbers. Um, as you can see, they're all inside this square. Again, that indicates they're real numbers. That is to say natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers are all real numbers. What are real numbers? Real numbers, simply put, are numbers that appear on a number line. Okay, so uh, just wanted to point that out to start. Let's take a look at natural numbers now. Natural numbers are sometimes referred to as counting numbers, and they're numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. As you can see, they don't include 0, and they don't include negatives. Whole numbers are natural numbers plus 0. So some examples of whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Integers are whole numbers plus negatives. So that looks like this. Uh, again, this continues to the left here. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. All right, rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as fractions. So that includes terminating decimals as well as repeating decimals. Uh, some examples of rational numbers are one half. Again, one half is a fraction, but if we were to express that as a decimal, it would be 0.5, which you can see is a terminating decimal. Uh, point 36 is a rational number. Again, we can write 0.36 as a fraction by placing it over 100. Um, one third, likewise, is a rational number. If we express one third in decimal form, that's 0.3333 repeat it. So that is a repeated number. It's also a fraction. So again, rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction, and that includes terminating as well as repeating decimals. All right, so before we talk about uh, irrational numbers, let's uh, review uh, rational numbers to make sure we fully understand how to read this chart. Um, again, we can see that different types of numbers are nested, are circled by other types of numbers. And what that means is certain types of numbers also meet the definition uh, for other types of numbers. So for example, we can see natural numbers is circled by whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. That means nat natural numbers can also be considered whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Whole numbers is circled by integers and rational numbers. That means whole numbers can also be considered integers and rational numbers. And finally, uh, integers is circled by rational numbers. That means integers are just considered rational numbers. Again, you read this outwardly, not inwardly. 
Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at some irrational numbers. Uh, irrational numbers are non-repeating decimals as well as the square roots of imperfect squares. So uh, some examples of irrational numbers are pi, e. These are both decimals that don't repeat but continue for infinity. Uh, then we have the square root of 2, the square root of 17. Well, let me stress this. Is the square root of 16 rational or irrational? Well, the square root of 16 is 4. 4 is a natural number. So the square root of 16, which is 4, is a rational number. What about the square root of 2? Why is that irrational? Well, if you used a calculator and you took the square root of 2, you can see that that would result in a non-repeating decimal that continues to infinity. Okay? And that meets the definition of being irrational. Uh, similarly, if you were to take the uh, square root of 17, you can see that that results in a non-repeating decimal, uh, and therefore it's irrational. All right, so at this point, you're probably saying, well, how am I ever going to memorize all this information? And what's more, is it even worth memorizing this information uh, just to answer maybe one question on the ASVAB? Well, the answer to that is yes, because what sets average test takers apart from exceptional test takers is this. Exceptional test takers find ways to commit a lot of information to memory. And one way they do that is by using mnemonic devices. In this case, uh, you can use the acronym NIRWI to understand everything in this chart. And that acronym, again, is NIRWI. N-W-I-R-I. NIRWI. And again, N corresponds to natural numbers. W corresponds to whole numbers. I corresponds to integers. R corresponds to rational numbers, and I corresponds to irrational numbers. When I write near we out, I make a little bar here to indicate that uh, there's a difference between uh, rational and irrational numbers. And I also know that all of near we is a real number. So with near we in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at a few practice problems here. As I mentioned at the start of this video, you should attempt to work out these practice problems on your own. Uh, so pause the video accordingly and then resume playing it to check your solution. This first question says, which of the following contains an irrational number? And to get started, I'm going to jot down my mnemonic device, near we. Again, this bar indicates that there's a difference between rational and irrational numbers. And in this case, we want to find the irrational number from all of these numbers down here. Irrational numbers, in case you forgot, is defined as a uh, non-repeating decimal, uh, such as pi, or the square root of an imperfect square. So as I look through these, uh, I can see the square root of 99. If you work out the square root of 99, that's going to result in a non-repeating decimal. So the answer to this one is B. All right, so let's move on to number two now. Number two says, what is the best classification for negative four? So I'm going to use my new mnemonic device to help with this one. Again, my mnemonic device was near we, with a bar separating the R and the I. And if you remember that chart, all these different classifications were types of real numbers. So negative four, uh, let's think about this for a second. Natural numbers are just counting numbers such as one, two, three, four, and five. Whole numbers are natural numbers plus zero. Integers are whole numbers uh, plus negatives. And that's what we have here. So four is an integer. And if we recall, we read that chart outwardly. So something that's an integer is also a rational number. And again, uh, integers and rational numbers are also real numbers. So negative four is an integer. 
It's a rational number and it's a real number, which is B. All right, let's move on to number three now. Number three says, which of the following square roots is an irrational number? All right, we've seen this question already. Uh, irrational numbers are non-repeating decimals as well as the square roots of imperfect squares. So let's take these one by one. Negative square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, so this is negative 4. Square root of 64 is just 8. Again, 8's a natural number. The square root of 8. Let's talk about that in a second, but let's move on to D, because right now we're deciding between D and C as our correct answer. Again, D is 1 over 64. Well, as far as uh, square roots go, we could rewrite this as the square root of 1 over the square root of 64. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 64 is 8. So the square root of 1 over 64 is the same as 1 8th. And 1 8th 1 8 is a fraction. Therefore, it's a rational number. If you were to plug the square root of 8 in your calculator, that would re result in a non-repeating decimal, which meets the definition of being irrational. So the answer to this one is C. All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four says the number 0.8 belongs to which of these sets? Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, real numbers, name all that apply. So for this one, I'm going to use my mnemonic device here. Nearly. And again, all of these are types of real numbers. So we're taking a look at point 0.8. Well, it's not a natural number. Again, natural numbers are counting numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's not a natural number. Whole numbers are natural numbers plus 0. So that's not included there. Integers are whole numbers plus negative. So that's not it. What about uh, rational numbers? Well, rational numbers are terminating decimals, which is what we have right here. So uh, 0.8 is a rational number. And as we may recall, all rational numbers are also real numbers. So 0.8 is rational as well as real. All right. All right, let's take a look at number five now. It says, given the following set of numbers, name the irrational numbers. So in this case, we're going to start by writing down our mnemonic device near we. And again, in this case, we're looking for irrational numbers. And the definition of irrational numbers is uh, non-repeating decimals, as well as the square root of imperfect squares. 23 is a natural number. The square root of 3, if you were to plug that into your calculator, it would give you a non-repeating decimal, and it's also the square root of an imperfect square. So the square root of 3 is irrational. 2.35 is a uh, terminating decimal, so we know it is a rational number. 0 is a whole number. Uh, negative 6.55, again, that's a terminating decimal, so we can write it as a fraction if we really wanted to. Therefore, it's a rational number. Uh, four ninths is a fraction, therefore we know it's a rational number, and negative two is an integer, therefore it's also a rational number. So from this set, uh, the only one that's irrational is the square root of three. Uh, number six says state whether the square root of 168 is rational or irrational. All right, so uh, for this one, you have to know your perfect squares. Again, the square root of 144 is 12. The square root of 169 is 13. Um, again, the definition of an irrational number is uh, a non-repeating decimal, as well as the square root of an imperfect square. 
Well, since 168 is neither 144 or 169, but it's between those, we know it is irrational. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a decimal that doesn't repeat as your answer. What about uh, the square root of 9? Is that rational or irrational? So the square root of 9 is 3. And 3, as you may recall, is a natural number. So again, natural numbers are rational. So this one's rational. Uh, number 8 says numbers such as pi, e, and non-perfect squares are what type of numbers? Well, if you remember from that chart above, these are irrational numbers. All right, so that's it for this video. While this may seem like a lot of information, again, just remember the, the mnemonic device near we. And again, these definitions are pretty easy to understand. Uh, as always, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. If you like the content I'm creating, please consider subscribing to my channel. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.